They went after these people viciously, all because they wanted to hurt the President of the United States. They figure they'll either hurt him or they'll take him out. That would be the ideal. And hopefully, the people involved are going to pay a big price because it should never be allowed to happen again. President Trump reacting to the latest development of the declassification of Obama administration. Officials who might have been involved in unmasking former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn's name in intelligence reports. Reacting to President Trump's accusations of wrongdoing, former President Barack Obama tweeted simply, vote. Let's bring in Jeff Mason now. Jeff is the White House reporter for Reuters. Uh, I am going to get to that in a moment, Jeff, but I want to start here. David Smut reporting that the House Foreign Affairs Committee, as well as a Senate committee, have launched an investigation into President Trump's late night firing of Steve Linick, who was the inspector general for the State Department. In fact, uh, department officials have acknowledged that Secretary Pompeo urged the firing. Where might this be heading? Well, I can confirm uh, that last piece that you said, Arthel. I was in touch with some White House officials earlier as well, and uh, one of them said uh, Secretary Pompeo recommended uh, this move, and the president agreed. So that's uh, all they're saying about the reasoning for uh, the president's late Friday night um, uh, decision to fire this inspector general. As far as where it's leading, I mean, I think it's clear that Democrats in Congress want to investigate uh, this and, and get to the bottom of what uh, Speaker Pelosi has called a, a pattern of retaliation by President Trump and his White House. Okay, we're going to move on now to this other big story, and that is the Michael Flynn case. So, first of all, is the unmasking illegal, and will this become the centerpiece for President Trump's reelection campaign? And if it's going to become that, how will he frame it, and will it work? Take it away, Jeff. Sure. Well, to the to the first question, um, unmasking is not illegal. It is. I mean, it is done, and the Trump administration has done it as well. I was uh, reading today that they have done it a, a, more than a thousand times, um, and it is it is allowed. And there were officials in the Obama administration who uh, were allowed to do that. That doesn't mean that there's not going to be a debate, as there obviously is right now, over whether it was right or the right thing to do. Um, but that's to your first question. As to whether or not it becomes the centerpiece of his campaign, uh, I think it, I, I don't think it'll be the centerpiece, but I think it's a building block. Uh, I think uh, it's clear from the president's uh, tweets, also from uh, comments by campaign officials and, and, for that matter, White House officials, that this is something that he intends to focus on uh, and, and probably see some political benefit from doing so. It is a rallying cry for his base in the same way that uh, using grievance was a rallying cry for people who voted for him uh, in 2016. And what do you think the Democrats' defense will be? I think uh, some Democrats will say this is a distraction technique, uh, that this will be something that the president is focusing on in an effort to, to have people look at that instead of uh, looking at his response to the coronavirus. Um, that said, and this sort of goes to your previous question as well, I, you know, I don't think the president is going to run away from his response to the coronavirus uh, during this campaign. I don't think he can, number one. Uh, and number two, you know, he has been portraying it as a huge success. Now, Democrats obviously don't see it that way. And, and Vice President Biden, the presumptive nominee, is going to and already has uh, be very critical of that response. Uh, but what the president has to do, and for that matter, what Vice President Biden has to do uh, in order to win the election in November is uh, ensure or uh, usher people uh, that he is the best person to restore the economy uh, and to keep them safe, both from this virus and from other threats to their safety and their, and their health. And the president is going to argue yeah. and already has started arguing um, that he brought the economy to uh, the heights that it was at at the beginning of this year and that he's the right person to do it again. Right. And then, of course, you know, you have the, the points that you're making, of, and it really comes down to the American people. If they're going to care more about the Michael Flynn case or do they care about how much the coronavirus pandemic has changed their lives? It's going to get down to that. What do you think? For sure. Well, I mean, I think it's hard to imagine 
uh, any issue being more important in 2020 than the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, I mean, obviously, there's a lot of time that's going to happen that has that, that will pass between now uh, and November. But this virus and its effects are not going away. Uh, the economic effects are not going away. The president has said that the fourth quarter is going to be a good one. Um, but, you know, if you look at the unemployment levels at where they are now, uh, it's, it's hard to imagine that even a good fourth quarter uh, is going to be good enough for lots of people who are suffering from the economic ramifications of this. So, yes, Arthel, it'll come down to people making a decision, uh, who do we want to lead us past 2020 uh, in this both economic and health care crisis? Uh, Vice President Biden is, is making his arguments and President Trump is making his. And we will continue to monitor it all. Jeff Mason, always a pleasure. Thank you very much.